Uh, thank you for choosing to watch this video on reloading. Uh, we're going to talk about reloading uh, rifle ammunition. Typically the, uh, the same principles apply whether you're reloading rifle or pistol ammunition. Uh, same processes, there's a few different components of the bullets and powder and stuff that you could use. So first of all, uh, I'm just going to go as quickly as I can through the, uh, the basics of reloading. So anyone who just bought a new kit or is looking to buy uh, a kit or the uh, tools to reload that they can kind of get a really good start with it and go from there. And towards the end of the video, I'll go over kind of a few more specific details and where I get the where I get the recipes or formulas basically for the powder I use and how I determine how much powder and everything else and why I do that. But I'm going to try to run through quickly then through this. So right here is a bag of spent brass that I have. Uh, when you shoot brass, the brass will get longer, and so. If you keep shooting and shooting it, you can damage your pistol, you can hurt yourself, uh, have misfires, a bunch of different issues, not safe to do so. So you need to, and most importantly, you're hurting accuracy. So what you want to do is we need to shave off uh, a little bit of that end. Now one of the tools that you'll need is a caliper. This is already preset uh, to the round I'm reloading, and I'm reloading a 300 Win Mag. So I've already dialed in the uh, the the length of that it should be. And it's just a little bit long. It's not quite fitting in there between. So what I'll do is I need to use the, uh, the trimmer to trim back the uh, casing a little bit. Now this trimmer that I have here is made by Hornady. Uh, nothing special about it. I don't have it screwed to the table because I don't have a whole lot of workspace to work with so I like to be able to stow it uh, when I'm not using it. And it's really not too difficult to just hold and, and twist at the same time. So what you have is you have here the, uh, the trim side and then a pilot. Uh, this goes inside your, uh, your casing to hold it uh, stable. It comes with multiple sizes of pilots, so you don't need to worry about getting one of those. It'll come in your kit. The other thing that uh, it has here is a, a shell holder. It's a universal shell holder. Now on a Hornady uh, trimmer, it will only fit a Hornady uh, shell holder which isn't great, but that's just the way it works. The shell holder does not come with the, the trim set. Everything else comes with it. And then to adjust it, what you would do is, is you could either get an already set round, put it in there, and then it just has set or set uh, brass and put it in there that's not, it's already been trimmed. And you could basically dial it in and set it with this. It's really easy to do. We won't go into too much detail to do that. So let's get it trimmed. What we'll do is we just, Go ahead and we drop it into the shell holder, tighten it in, then we're going to push it. Now you'll hear, as I'm turning it, you'll hear it grinding. And then you can hear when it just starts to rub against the, the brass and stops actually shaving parts off. Once you're there, you've taken off all the uh, length you need. Now another tool you'll need is uh, this basically cleans out the inside top and the outside top of the neck. So we take the first part of all the little burrs and shavings that are still left after doing that. Just take it and just give it a few turns and it'll clean out the inside. This side, we'll do the outside. And there's variations on this tool too. Say they look the same, but sometimes they're, they're two tools or whatever. I really like this just being one simple tool. So there we are. It's all shaved and ready to go. We can check it. And there it is, it fits perfectly into the, uh, the caliper, so we're the right size. Now the next tool, the next thing we're going to do now that we've got the length right, we need to prep it for reshaping the, uh, the brass and removing the primer. And the first thing we're going to do for that is I've got a lube pad here, and the lube I use uh, it's more like a, a Vaseline type consistency. Uh, this brand is made uh, by Hornady. Uh, the most important thing is that it's more of kind of a, a, a Vaseline type deal. It's not Vaseline, but it has that feel. The, I've tried the other aerosol spray lubes that they have out there. They do not work whatsoever for rifle rounds. Uh, really don't waste your money on those. You want something that's a little bit thicker consistency. So to get started, what you'll do is you'll take a little bit. I'm not putting a whole lot on the uh, the pad since I've already uh, lubed it up and used it before and it's pretty well lubed. 
but when you get it the first time, you probably have to lube it pretty heavily. And then you'll be able to tell as, as your rounds aren't being resized, taking a little more effort, that maybe you need to put a little bit more lube on your pad. You can do quite a few rounds. I mean, we're talking about 50 plus rounds uh, per lubing. And then what I'll do is I'll scrape any excess off. And also that spreads it all the way across the whole pad. Set the, uh, the casing. Just run around so it's fully lubed. Now all the way around is fully lubed. It doesn't need to fit right around the top of the neck. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, so now we're all set with the lubing. Now one additional thing that I do uh, that I haven't seen uh, other people do, I'm sure they probably do pretty often, is that I'll take some lube and I'll actually put it inside the neck of the... Uh, the casing. The reason is when you resize it, there's actually a head that will come in the inside and help push it out and, and, and keep it stable as well. And it can be kind of sticky when it does that. So a little bit of lube I found to help. Uh, just need a little bit, just dab it in there a little bit and just take it and spread it in the inside. I use a Q-tip, works really well. Uh, whole idea is just get just a little bit of lube there in the inside. Now I'm only showing one round at a time. Uh, normally I'd be doing 20 to 30 rounds at any time, sometimes more, uh, but you guys don't want to see me do all that, so I'm just doing one at a time. So it's much, much quicker than this when you're, when you're actually doing it more to production. This I'm just trying to show you how it's done and keep it as simple as possible. Okay, so now we're all ready to resize it and remove the primer. Now one thing that you'll need to get, and this won't come with any kit, they buy, you have to buy them special for the different caliber you have. This is a die set for a, a 300 Win Mag. It's made by Hornady. Uh, there's a bunch of different manufacturers out there. The first die that we're going to use to resize it's the resizing die. This pin here removes the primer, and then the casing will go in there. It'll reshape the casing as well. Uh, to adjust this, the length here on the die is super easy, uh, self explanatory to do. The only thing that you'll need to pay attention of that I didn't catch at the very beginning is when you're twisting, you'll twist this down to lower the, or raise the pin, and then you'll need a set of pliers and you'll tighten this uh, bolt there up on top, and that'll keep the pin from going up and down. So if your pin's going up and down, make sure that's tighter on top. The second die is your bullet setting die. Uh, make sure that your, your bullet goes on straight into your casing and sets it in for you. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and move the camera just a little bit. This is the press that I use. I use a Hornady press. Uh, again, nothing special about it. The way it works is, is one thing nice actually about Hornady is it has a quick set and release for the, uh, the primer. So just drop it in and turn it. Really nice feature. Right here, this is the, another shell holder. Uh, universal shell holder. Uh, that fits the casing that, I, that I'm using. Now it's going to be a little bit awkward because I'm holding the camera with one hand, but what you'll do to remove the primer is you'll put the, the uh, brass in there, just pull down on the lever, and then just pull it back up. Now that'll get easier. That was a little hard pulling up. One, because I was using one hand. The other is as I do more and more rounds, it'll start lubing that head that goes inside of the brass. So there we are, you may have seen the, the primer fall. And there we are right there with the, uh, the primer removed and the brass reshaped. Okay, now that we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we have to clean out the primer pocket. So what we'll do is there's a tool here. You can buy a bunch of toolkits that have a bunch of different tools. This is one that works for me. You just drop it right there into the primer pocket. Give it a few turns and it'll clean the, clean the primer pocket out there just fine for you so that your primer gets set in there nice and easy. Now I reprime on the, uh, the press. They have hand deals that you can do it with. I really don't like them as much. I feel I can get a lot better job and quicker for me on the press. So what you'll do is it comes with a piece like this. Now for some reason, I've seen people keep them on the press. Mine just never quite stays on right, so I usually just take it off. To put it in, you just drop it. And it's ready to go. You'll see there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the, uh, 
priming tool off. Now here's my my uh, charges or uh, primers I've got. There's magnum rifle and non-magnum. Uh, you want to make sure if you're shooting magnum, you're using magnum, non-magnum, non-magnum. Okay, there we are. I just drop one out. So that's what we're just really kind of a small, small little deal. You'll take it and you'll set it right there on top. And now what we'll do is, again, this is a little bit hard with just one hand, so I'm gonna raise it and just a little bit. Sometimes that'll stick just a hair. Okay. Now again, normally it's not that problematic when doing two hands. Go ahead and put the, the casing in. And all you have to do is just push it down, just snugly, not too hard. Just kind of make sure it's in there secure. Pull it out. And there you are, you've got your primer in there. Okay, now that's all the boring stuff for me. Now we get to add, start making it more of a bullet. So now we've got, we're all ready to start putting powder uh, inside the uh, bullet. It's ready to go. And I normally have a shell holder, I put these in because uh, I'm doing one at a time, I'm, I'm not doing that. So we'll go ahead and set the scale here. It's just an electronic scale. Take the little cup that it comes with, just put it on. Let it calibrate its weight. And there's a button you'll push when you get it self-explanatory that'll neutralize and tear out the weight so that you're at zero. Now we're gonna do a base of my formula. I need uh, 60.3 60, 60 grains of powder inside my round. So what we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and fill this with some powder. Now what I use here just to get the main load, I have a Hornady uh, kind of powder dispenser. They're not really, really accurate, and I go for long range and uh, far shooting, so having inconsistencies is something that really wouldn't work for me. So, but this does get me close, so I don't have to dump it right from the can into the uh, into the uh, the cup. So there we are. So. I'll just load it up with a, a load. And again, this is really easy to adjust and to use, not complicated at all. You, just reading the manual, you'll, you'll get it. So then I'll put that there on the scale and it comes to 58.5 grains. So I'm, I'm a little bit light, which I expected. Then it comes with a tool that just lets you just trickle out just a, a few little grains at a time. So here we are. These, these scales are extremely sensitive and you'll be surprised at how little powder uh, it actually takes to, to get where you need to be. Okay, so there we are, 60.3. All set and ready to go. Then what you'll do is you'll grab a funnel And you'll put the, uh, the case in there underneath and just drop the powder into the funnel. And we're set now to uh, put a bullet in. So grab the bullet here. Also, I'm going to grab my, uh, my die for the uh, putting the bullet in. I'm going to put it into the press and I'll show you that here. Now one problem that happens, it's to me it's worth it, but when I lube the inside you get a little bit of powder that sticks around the end of your uh, your neck. So I will usually just quickly just push the barrel or the uh, the bullet in the top to make sure it's shoved down so that I don't, don't jam anything up as I put it there. Okay, now we'll go ahead and move you over here to see the press. Okay, so I'm going to Remove the, the primer. Just go ahead and see, put your uh, brass in, place your bullet, and it holds all by itself, the way that it's set up. And then I just, simple as that, and there you are. You've got a completed uh, 300 Win Mag round. Nothing different or unique 
uh, about this round uh, when it comes to reloading than any other round. And then I'll wipe it off with the cloth and stuff when I'm done so that I uh, just get all that extra lube off so I don't have all that on there. Okay, now uh, if you're still interested, you can stay uh, watching the video and I'll kind of go to how I, how I determine the powder settings and different things like that. Also, how I decide what type of bullet I want to buy. So what I have here, uh, this book again is by Hornady. You can see I just got set with Hornady. They have a lot of really easy to use uh, kits and everything else like that. So this basically has the loads for every single pistol rifle that you can possibly imagine. I mean, maybe there's one it doesn't have, but that would, that would be extremely rare. So what you're looking for, I'm gonna to cater a little bit to people who wanna do a little bit more of long range shooting, 500,000 yards or, or longer. Uh, and really want to have extreme accuracy. Now, because I shoot so long, I look for a, a bullet that has a high uh, a ballistic coefficient. So the one that I shoot here is the number 3715 uh, bullet by Hornady, has a coefficient of uh, 0.53. And the overall length, if I wanted to measure one of the, uh, the casings, should come out to 3.34 inches. Now what you have here, and it's going to be a little bit hard to see, but when you get a book you'll understand. There's all in the left here, there's in yellow, there's a bunch of different powder names that you can use, and the grains that you'll want to, uh, that you can fill it to, and the velocity here that the bullet will go at. This again is for a 300 Winchester Magnum, where it's the red means don't go any higher than this. So what I did when I determine what round I want to do. I wanted a faster shooting round going longer distance, travel more area without the, as much drop was really what I was trying to go for. I chose this hybrid uh, 100V. Now it has different settings all the way from 58.3 grains to uh, 68.2 grains. So there's a quite a variation. Uh, it goes from 2,500 feet per second to 3,000 feet.